Sé que de lo bajo, sé que de lo bajo, o lo ami o ti de o yo sé que le. Hello and welcome to the Ashen Forge. I am Phantom X, joined as always by Diggs and the legendary Neurotoxin. How are you two doing? Great, good. great. Doing good. Had a fun uh, little uh, time since our last one. Of course, as I said in chat, we took the last weekend to kind of stop and smell the roses a little bit. This week's kind of been a fun one for me. A uh, project I've been working on was just announced on the limited run games little uh, preview special thing, which was hilarious. Um, yeah, so check that arcade game at the end of it, Death Wish Enforcers. I did all the design stuff on it. Well, me and somebody else, but I'm designing design dude design. It was fun. So fun. Still working on it. It's coming up, but uh, well, yeah, that's, cool. that's what, yeah, completely outside of the realm of MMOs. Something completely, you know, you're not even going to be playing this on PC. Whatever, just throwing it out there because that's what I've been up to. That's oh, I'm awesome. playing Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves has been fun. And tell me about that. You could only play on one side at the moment. What side? Uh, so Sea of Thieves, we believe you can pick either of the factions based on a uh, prior rep with them from having played in the past but it appears that we don't have the um uh the more bad dude sort of reputation so we're not sure that we can actually join with them but i think right now we're still just trying to like get our sea legs and have a few good voyages we've done that we haven't uh haven't lost too much other than that one dude that decided to uh, uh, spawn camp us because uh, one of us tried to steal his treasure or something, um, which was hilarious. But uh, it it's pretty so, fun. It's um, I don't feel like we're seeing nearly as many people coming to ruin our good time or when we see other people, if we don't mess with them, they don't really mess with us. So it's kind of nice that it isn't just, you know, see someone shoot someone, cannon battles, and that's that's all that you're ever doing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, we're allowed yes. to do things outside of MMOs. <laughs> we are. Well, of course, DLP crew does just about any game that comes out. So Yeah. Um, oh, and we were also playing... Just... Yeah, Risk of Rain 2. Apparently, you got to use some console commands, but damn it, you can play with more than four people. So that's fun. <laughs> it's a good game for it. The uh, fun news for me since the last time we were on is that um, I was watching the TV show Shining Girls. And after the penultimate episode, I, there was a huge twist at the end of the penultimate episode. Um, so I bought the book and I read the book. and. Um, uh I bought the book and read the book and um for some reason I skimmed through the acknowledgments at the end. I don't know what made me do that, but Snipe Hunter and Ombla were mentioned in the acknowledgments of the book. And I was like, what 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 the fuck? <laughs> um they helped her with the research for some of the history stuff. Um and uh yeah, so I I I, I messaged uh Snipe Hunter on discord and was like what what the fuck shiny girls and he's like what and i'm like you guys were in the thank yous I said oh yeah i think you're the first person to run across that um that was a little bizarre just to be reading a book and randomly have your friends mentioned in the acknowledgments it's weird um but fun well so what do we have to talk about um I think we have some questions from last time. We've still not done the dev discussion over um, RNG. And then also 
Diggs is always getting into arguments on, we'll call them animated discussions on the forums, actually brought up something very interesting. Um, well, you can, why don't we start with that? Why don't you kind of talk about this cosmetic? What are you shaking your head now? <laughs> we, we can go with that. Yeah, so so just, well, I'll start. So it looks like there's there's a there was a person on the forums who essentially was upset because the posts on social media uh, for Ashes of Creation seem to entirely be based on uh, the cash shop and not just the fact that they're based on the cash shop, but they are doing things in a way that's not notifying people they are responding to that what they are seeing is an item that costs real money uh, that may or may not be available when they actually play. So I, that seemed to be, I have to be honest, this question or the complaint initially, I was very confused as to what was this person trying to say. Um, did I summarize well, that pretty well? It seemed to me that, well, or what I understood from it at first was that they're upset that um, they are pushing uh, in, in Twitter and social media. They are pushing to have people buy the cosmetics especially when they're cosmetics that are, you know, super expensive. Um, uh, Because I think what I responded to says, um, hold on one second. It says, uh, I'm starting to get frustrated with the social media and marketing team uh, for all their daily posts that only showcase exclusive skins that people paid $250 or $375 for and are no longer available for new community members. Um, and I think one of the big things for me is that's not all, that's not the only thing on Twitter. Um, like we, we, we just responded to the Pyre um, homes recently. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, you know, something about the villages. I think we get lots of fun stuff that's not, just about the cosmetics and to me the cosmetics that we see on twitter are really more about um showcasing that they've moved from 2d concept art over to 3d 3d modeling that's in the game um and then it's mostly just a, a fun way for them to connect with us several times per week um so that's what i think of when i think of their tip twitter scheme i don't really think of it as pushing the cosmetics um but i don't know uh, what what are how, how do you guys feel about the twitter um interaction um so i'm gonna say first off this is um <clears throat> this is the style that i don't know who established it at soe but uh, Omid definitely parroted this as, you know, gave this advice to anybody who's trying to promote something is post three times a day, you know, at different times of the day, include an image or a video, ask a question and give something actionable to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what every post strives to do. So if it's going to be about skins, things that are currently available, things that had once been available, things that are now becoming available to at least see what the final products look like. Uh, yeah, that's that's what they're going to be posting because the marketing team gets stuff from the content team. They they go through and make approvals and stuff. And then that stuff that the marketing team has in their approved um, arsenal of things to post and talk about is what's going to be um, uh, going into the posts that they make for the next month or however long. So that's why they're being promoted in that way. I know we've had uh, discussions in the past about the perception that people are able to pay to win by getting these. And then there it's explained, no, these are just skins. And then the other complaint comes, well, 
why do they have such amazing descriptions that they're these, you know, fantastical, wondrous items if it's literally just a skin and it doesn't actually imbue any of those properties on your character? It's like, well, because we're not a pay to win game, but we also want the things to be appealing. So instead of just showing you images, we'll tell you a story. We'll have them come with other things in a pack. So you see the story. Now for the cost of the skins, yeah, when you when you're buying up to the level where you can buy the skins initially, sure, that's that's an investment. That's right. Um, yeah, most I, of I, which is going to support the game, not mm -hmm. and you know you're buying into beta and alpha and all that stuff. It's not mm -hmm. really about the skins, but and but even if that wasn't the thing, I I think the one thing that I'm trying to still find the citation on and uh i'm not going to say definitively uh and i might have even said definitively in the past but i'm gonna need to find the citation because if i'm not mistaken the intention for the ember shop is all the embers that you've gotten from when you played apocalypse and that are given to you uh as a part of your uh account purchase stuff and you're you know upgrading your packages is stuff that can be used to get stuff that you didn't get that there's like a last chance to to grab stuff from the um the entire build up to launch and then the embers will go away and be no more because there will be no other chance to spend them i don't know if that's actually the case though i am going to find a citation for that at some point here or a citation for something that refutes it but as far as I'm can, uh, aware, I think that's still the plan that, yes, FOMO, but if you did miss out and you've got the embers from having bought in and, and joined up and you've got to get that damn Stufferton bear, you can get that Stufferton bear. Last chance, one time when the store opens to use your embers before the game starts. I think that's what's planned. But again, oh, I, I need to find A, a citation for that, and B... Uh, I also need to take in mind the consideration, as we all do, that the idea of that can change. The plan can change. Nothing is concrete. It's all digital. There isn't like a printing press that's making a finite amount of these armors that go on each of the different characters and stuff. That's not how this works. So, uh, you know, scarcity is on them to enforce or otherwise. Um Unless there is something legally stated in the stuff, like maybe the stuff with the Kickstarter, uh, that is not available by any other means and never will be, they can, you know, work around it in various ways. Then the other thing is they can always make like n similar reissues. I think that's something that Blizzard's been doing in Overwatch recently is Oh, you missed this exclusive skin? Well, sorry, we're going to release a different version with a different color that you can get, though. So, like, it's almost as cool, right? Um, so, you know, I would imagine something similar where the the analogous but not the same stuff could also be made into um, a separate set that can be sold later if they need to. So it took me a minute to get this question. Um, like I said, initially, I wasn't really sure what the OP was is trying to say, whether this was well, all they do is post links to the cash shop. I want in-game stuff, which is part of what the text was. The reality, you know, the argument to that, though, is there is no in-game like there's nothing releasable beyond what they are putting out in the cash shop. I mean, certainly we're getting things though, the character creator, the weather system. So, you know, for every, once a month, we seem to be getting something that you get to put your eyes on, but you can't really expect a, a social media team to constantly put out new, new stuff you don't see every day. You know, so there, I, I didn't understand that point. The other, the other things that, uh, seems to be overstated is the idea that every other post is somehow related to this. It's not. I actually just went through Twitter. It's like I had to go five or six posts down before I found a link. Certainly they've used pictures to stories, but it's not linked to the shop. So you didn't wouldn't necessarily know it's a shop item. Um, and then the other thing is he, he or they keep saying, you know, that, that 
it's a $375 item that's no longer available, which is also on its face not true because you can buy these individually for much less than $375. Now, if you want to be in the alpha, then yeah, you're gonna buy a package of some sort of value that's pretty high. But the items themselves range from what, 10 to $40, I think, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so, which is still a lot of money, but it certainly is not $375. Now, I, mm -hmm. I understand, I, it took about 20 posts basically to the end of the first page to really understand what the person was saying, which I actually tend to agree with, was this idea that the team continues, they will get asked a question, like a follow-up question to the question they asked about, you know, will you have some type of armor that I can get in the game? And then they will link something that is a purchasable item. And it has not yet been made clear that these are things we can get later for sure as a different colored skin or something similar. And so I understand that, that, that they're sort of leading potentially people who don't know the, the cast, the model of payment for this into believing they are going to have access to something that they see on Twitter that they actually are not going to have access on to because they failed to purchase it months ago or maybe in instances years ago. So I, under, I actually understand that part I tend to agree with and that that I've always had issues with how they run the cash shop. I mean, we've talked about this before, you know, when they put some sort of flavor text under an item, you know, if you're not very careful in understanding that these are skins, you are automatically going to think that it does what it says it does. Um, you know, some special lightning rod that causes light, you know, causes something around you to happen. Um, it's not going to do that. It's a skin. But you don't you wouldn't know that unless you really paid attention. And I feel or like it can do it, but it's just an emote. It doesn't actually have any bearing on the game. Right. So so and, and again, I understand and I actually am very happy that there's no pay to win. So so you know, I, I get it, but it's not worded in a way that that I think most people would understand. And this I feel like follows that similar pattern that, that they are they are showing potential buyers things that are no longer available as a way to entice them in. Yes, you can look at this. You can you can get this. Come play our game and look at this really badass set of armor that you can get. Number one, it's a skin. It's not actually even a set of armor. Well, I guess depending on how you want to parse the words. Um, <laughs> number two, you you can't get it. You've you missed that chance. You know oh, that was an item from October 2020. Sorry, um, you know. So, so I, I get it, it took a very long time to get to that part of the post, but I, I, I tend to actually agree with that. Um, I think the argument against that, though, is that, you know, they're also not linking to the shop. So they're, they're not necessarily it's an example of an of an art. It's not you know, this is something that you could potentially see similar items to, I guess, is, is which I, I understand. But and they said that that you won't be able to find these exact items but they gave for the uh that ice golem armor set or whatever as an example the pieces that we designed that were like are we going to use them aren't we going to use them the ones that didn't make it are the similar analogous pieces you will be able to find and potentially even craft um and I do want to also answer yes definitively, and I'm going to stop saying it's a maybe uh, until they say otherwise. December 6, 2018, about an hour into that live stream, um, that's when it was stated that the embers you got uh, from Apocalypse or from you know buying in on your account will be spendable when the game launches on uh, aesthetic items. That doesn't necessarily mean they are the things that you know, were available on the shop during each of the months, or if it's going to be a different set of things. Um, if I can find more data on that, that'd be a thing. Otherwise, I think I might know the question I need to ask for this month's Q&A. Nice. And if I do and you see it, give it that thumbs up so they'll ask it, please. One yep. question. Bang. Come on, you gotta like post, you gotta spam them questions. No, then they'll they don't answer yeah. any of them. That's the easy one. Oh, yeah. two questions, no answer. No, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, I, like, that's I gotta, I gotta, 
Ah, so annoyed. I got a, a, a little ping back from whoever the moderator, whoever it is that answers that, that, oh, next back, time, maybe. only ask one question per post. And maybe it's so, so, okay, I have like a dozen questions. I will make a dozen posts if that's what you want. I feel like that's very um, I unnecessary. To, no, each, each Q and A. Oh, come on. That's just, that's just dumb. Ooh. One well, question. find other people uh, or that's like just dumb. Make, make alt accounts. That's dumb. Uh, that, is the, question, that is the dumbest so rule that I could ever think of. One question. You are, a game, well, no, you are looks, a game in development with a lot of hidden stuff, with a lot of promises that are still hidden. Uh, there's going to have more than one question. Sorry. Okay, but if every person that's going to ask one question asks 20 questions, um, they don't have enough hours allocated to the community team don't take well, a q and a well don't then, do a that's Q&A why they've got it don't go to q and a if you don't question. have the people you to can do ask the, Q&A. One the next month and the next month it's fine. i mean it's the same it's the same thing we talk about with development don't promise something if you don't have the people to do it um, they, they tell you if you ask more than one they're not gonna ask yeah any they're, they're clear about it that's a dumb sorry well it's a stupid guess. Stop saying it's dumb and stupid, and we'll schedule another interview with someone on the team sometime. Like, that's the easiest way. Just get them on the team. Yeah. I get, <laughs> get it. It has the, rules. Uh, I don't know. The, the, uh, the rules here, themselves are, are, are I, you know, when you have a once a month, you have 12 opportunities a year to ask a question, and you're allowed 12 questions. That seems absurd. I'm sorry. Maybe well, again, make it that's two. why we should just double do an interview let's, let's and double get make more it people two. on. <laughs> get more information just by asking or find some other avenue. That's not the only way we can ask questions about it and get answers. Yeah, that's just the way it happens basically. on the We don't even get them answered then. <laughs> and, well. Speaking of which, I did ask a question and got a kind of um, answer. I asked a question. Then I didn't ask a question. I made a suggestion about um having the vec and the kalar and the dunier um in game together for this month's live stream so we can compare the sizes um and the answer i got was yeah probably later rather than sooner don't expect that this month um but that is the fun thing and this has been true ever since i've been dealing with uh Omid and the SOE devs is um, when I ask them questions, I get a quick reply. Um, yeah, I think the reply I got was might not be something you see for a bit. Um, but it seems like if they've had a VEC in game uh, last dev stream and they should be able to put that next to a Dunier, I think they have the Dunier models ready, right? So I, I want to see if they're still tiny. Because well, they're, they're, they're broader, but I have a feeling they still might be tiny. I want to see you you might are. you might have an easier chance just saying, "Hey, can I see all the different races with the sandal for scale?" Ha 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 ha! Right. And he's like, "Oh, sandal! Oh, sure, we'll do that." And it's like, "All right, now time to extrapolate all of this." <laughs> yeah, and one question per month because it's not like you actually will get twelve questions per month, right? Uh, you might have to well, ask I mean, that same that, question. And that broadens the argument. Four times, right? It's like now I'm thinking, okay, so I have 10 questions. Eight of them I'm pretty sure they won't answer, but they're the eight I really want them to answer. So, But then I but I only get one, so I might as well toss those eight. So I got two left that I'm kind of interested in. And then it's like, what's the point anyways? Or you can just talk about them on here because, you know, they watch. Oh, well, yeah. No. <laughs> Well, if they well, do, I am not trying to attack a person. I am I am disgruntled with the policy, not a, not a person. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, because it would be nice if they would pick one of your twelve instead of um instead of uh. You know. Just saying, if you ask two, we're not going to consider either of them. Um. Okay. Yeah, there's there, there's a bunch. <laughs> Um. Yep. Anyhow, yep. RNG. What do you got? Uh, so, so, so I have a question. So, so actually, there was a question on the forums, and it came out. And with regards to enchanting items specifically, I was thinking 
meh, I don't know that I care. And then somebody finally reminded me of uh, New World RNG, and I was like, oh, for crafting, yeah, I I I, I hated RNG for crafting, and um, I, I it depends on what the RNG is going to do and how debilitating it's going to be. Um, but specifically with regard to crafting, I would prefer to be able to craft stats that I want on my armor and be like, if I'm a master crafter, I should be able to put the stats I want on the stuff that I craft. So I don't want RNG that's similar to new world RNG on my crafting. But I, 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 I think RPGs should have some it's, RNG. It's not RNG. It's limitless crafting. Get your wording right. We have never-ending craft. That is how they worded it. This Our crafting never ends. You cannot craft everything because it is that they are, because there's literally like a million combinations. Yeah, I don't know that I want to craft everything. I just need to be able to put the stats I want on the stuff I have. That's not even close to never ending combination. Star Wars Galaxies didn't even have the same materials at the same time each year. Yeah, you were in that system. There was no way you were going to make the same thing time and time again for a while. You're going to make the best of things. You're going to keep getting better. You're going to load a Wookiee with uh, equipment in every slot with plus armor and weapon crafting stuff and make the best items in the game. Sure. But, you know, that's. Yeah, it's that's truly a limitless system. Uh, I can kind of see through the veil of what's going on with New World, and it's just not robust. It's it does rely too much on RNG. It doesn't reward the players enough. I I think about it this way. I take the perspective once again. Video games are just supposed to mimic things that that we can't otherwise you know present in such a streamlined way but we can think about and consider so i think about like dungeons and dragons and i think about a good dungeon master well maybe it isn't even rng you might feel like it's rng they might even give you some some roles in the illusion but they've taken the time Taken notes, paid attention to your characters and their interactions and the things that they think are really cool and interesting and useful. And maybe you've said a few times, oh, man, if I had that like gem of fisheye lens, I could make some like really cool astral projection movies and stuff. And so whatever, like, you know, whatever crazy items and stuff, if there's something really ridiculous or something out of the book that doesn't exist, that someone's like, this would really make my character. I'm totally ready to spend like the next three to five character levels on a quest just working on this thing. Yeah, a good a good DM will support that. The die roll isn't, oh, you've slain the black dragon. See who gets what item. It's you've slain the black dragon. I already pre curated what everyone's going to get. What you're rolling for is all of the other accessory free junk that you're going to get some extra potions and money and some, you know, ammo and some, you know, crappy crap. Uh, a simple DM, uh, I would say, treats things a little more to the textbook they don't do it in a benevolent way nor do they do it in a malicious way it is simply oh you have completed this kind of encounter here's what level it was here's what level you are here's what die roll set on the treasure table it's supposed to be well it's simple we roll this and then we roll this okay these are the items you get to choose between you who gets what it's not preferential towards anybody is truly random it can make or break a run it could very much be you go three or four of these major encounters without getting a single like real useful long-term item and instead of the uh the dm going and you know trying to give a little bit of help and assistance they just run it as it is and it's like well you know the dice do what the dice do Let's just keep on going, guys. Um, that's not, you know, that's I kind of think of not New World, but, you know, 
something with maybe a simpler like maybe wow would be something like that i think when i think of new world i think of a total jerk dm you've got to kill 100 goblins to get goblin essences and goblin skins and you're going to try to make a goblin slaying sword and so you go and you make a goblin slaying sword and you roll the dice to see what it comes up with and you know plus two intelligence minus one strength minus one con uh uh plus five extra damage to goblins plus three extra damage to orcs makes your crotch itch all the time minus one focus on any physical activities you know like i new world really didn't know what it was trying to do you get shield blocking stuff on two-handed weapons what the hell are you doing you know it's it's really the the antithesis of a good crafting system where you can set pieces and things in motion to have the sort of specificity you want and need. They had the inklings of it, but instead of as you skilled up higher and higher, you can use more of these specialized things to make it exactly the sort of thing you're looking for. They had the tools for it, but they didn't want to give it to you. No, they only want you to get up to three out of five things that you can set with it. And then the other two, well, they're just, you're just rolling the dice. You're going to be wasting a whole lot of materials if there's like one or two things in particular you're hoping to get. Maybe the thing that you make is good for someone's build somewhere, but there isn't a very good curated trade system for someone to put up, hey, I need an item with these parameters. And then for you to go and check and be like, whoa, this thing I crafted that totally sucks for me fits that person's parameters. I will sell it to them. There's no inkling of that. So where there could have been an economy that comes out of the absolute garbage RNG of it, uh, unfortunately, doesn't manifest because nobody wants to deal with that level of trade and like wheeling and dealing and dealing with the market and all that sort of stuff. So good DM, that's what I'm looking for. You're not going to get that in Ashes of Creation because that's too powerful. The game isn't going to ask us, hey, what item do you want, buddy? But what I'm hoping is that we'll at least be somewhere between the good and the simple DM, where it will at least weight the things that are available based on who is actually productive in the fight, what they've done. If your healers are what saved that fight, if you've got five times as much healing than damage output, my goodness, you need to be healing. You need to be dropping items for your clerics and your healery type people for sure. If this is something where like your your uh, tanks are just like the ones that really made it happen and your ranger people didn't really do much of anything. Well, de-emphasize range weapons and emphasize heavy armor. It's not that everything is going to be set in stone that okay if these people do this you get that if these people do this to get that but you know for the composition of who participates in something and how well the different kind of groups and people perform make sure that things that that'll actually help those people are some of the things that you'll see on the list some of the high to medium you know epic to, to magic level items so yeah, that's that's kind of what I think with it. I think that we're supposed to have uh, component drops more so than than actual items. Um, and so I'm just hoping primarily to be able to, you know, if we defeat the dragon, get some dragon eyes, get some dragon wings, get some dragon claws, and then uh, dragon scales, and then we take them to a crafter and make the stuff that we want um so i shouldn't have to be worried too much about whether i'm gonna get uh you know cleric stuff or rogue stuff or whatever i just want to get a piece of that boss and then craft that into whatever it is that i want so you know like even if we're doing those um monster horde things or whatever we're getting out of a siege you know give me some dragon scales i don't necessarily have to have the dragon eye if i didn't participate that much but give me some dragon scales and let me do something with those scales and 
it's related to that dragon, blue dragon. You know, maybe it's a frost dragon. Then you know, let me add a little bit of frost power to my weapons or my armor or whatever. So, but again, that comes with in some ways less RNG because I I I think that we should be able to if we're having master crafters, we should be able to craft the stuff that we're trying to craft instead of trying to make a souffle and end up with a pudding. Like, how did that happen? Yeah, I, I'm pretty practical, like how I how I view these things. Um, so I think there are definitely areas that RNG makes sense. Um, but then, you know, in the areas that interest me, there, there are things that should I feel like the, it's the opposite, right? So as, as you both have mentioned, specifically to crafting, um, what you know, I won't go through my big thing with uh, New World, but essentially the way I view crafting is as your character increases in skill, they are becoming more knowledgeable. Therefore, they should have increased control over what they create and the perks or the stats, whatever you want to call it. They should have. Uh, even if it's just a gem slot that then somebody else can put a gem from a gem crafter, they should obtain more control over what they are doing. And that basically applies to nearly every crafting subspecialty that you can think of. Um, I wouldn't necessarily apply it to things like harvesting. Uh, you know, there's some randomness there, right? So you don't know if you're getting that ore vein, maybe you get a little bit of gold mixed in with what you know, the copper that you were getting. So there should be some randomness in there. Processing, I, you know, maybe still to a degree too, um, less so I would say, but even then though, I would say as you are improving as say a processor, you should still get more skillful at what you're doing so that the randomness gets less. Um, that, that would be my entire argument from crafting. Farming, I think, would be a little different. There are a lot of different elements, that, depending on how complex they make it, where you could introduce some randomness that I think makes sense there, too. Um, you know, they're not going to go the whole breeding pathway for crops like they are animal husbandry. But, you know, just by the nature of breeding, you like animal husbandry, you are introducing randomness through uh, simulated genetics. Right. So um, so there should still be some degree of randomness there. But by far, as you progress as a crafter, you should become more skilled. The same as um, same as a combatant. You know, imagine the complaints of as you leveled your character up and they got stronger and they got more stamina and they got these really badass weapons. Imagine the complaints if you're still missing like a fourth of the time because of random chance. Like people would just quit playing the game. So why it still persists in crafting, I have no idea. I, you know, other than crafting has really never been so important as to, you know, drive people away if there was a major issue like that in it. And the whole idea that endless crafting somehow centers around randomness is just lazy, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, that's that's certainly not a way to do it. Um, you know, they're saying, it, but gosh, where else did they have conversations? You know, uh, drops, item drops. You know, I don't think there should be randomness associated with that. And said, well, there should be, but. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very practical. If I see if I'm fighting something and it's wearing armor, I should be able to loot that armor. If I'm fighting a wolf, I should be able to get a pelt when I'm done and more than one tooth. I, I was hey, like, why do I get one tooth or one eyeball? They've got two uh, or they've got right. 20 teeth. Why am I only getting one? Um, you know, but but on a, a, a humanoid, yeah, there'd be some randomness. You don't know how much coin they're carrying. You don't know what's in their bag, what's in their pockets. Uh, but if you see it, you should be able to loot it. So. Ooh, but also in all, all the wolves ashes, have gingivitis, by the way. In ashes, we have um, we have um, backpacks where we can see what's on the backpack. That's kind of fascinating too. What will we be able to see? Um, of course, the big problem is when we're fighting, you know, wolves, and we don't know what they ate all those gold coins or silver coins or that broadsword that they ate. No, it's all in their fur. It's just in their fur. But, or like one Paul. Like they have four. Why am I only able to get one? 
I mean, that started back with EverQuest, though. Like, you get a Paul. It's like, okay, what happened to the others? I guess I did. Well, I destroyed them. Yeah, while you were trying to butcher the body, you actually. Yeah, because everyone swings the sword at the big toe. That's where we aim. Mm -hmm. You know, that we all know that's how you kill the wolf is by cutting off its toes. Well, you still have to butcher it. You can't just, you know, put it on your shoulders and carry the whole thing back with you. Why not? Unless you have a bag of holding, maybe. There's magic in the world. That's what you tell me all the time. Why not? Why can't why can't I shove the, the, the wolf carcass into a bag? Yeah. Or like Oregon Trail style. Why can't you just shoot an entire bison and then instead of having only bring back 50 pounds of meat, you just drag the whole thing back because it's magic. <laughs> I um, I was going to say about harvesting and processing, I could definitely see skill and product differences, different ways to target things for certain specificity, um, trying to go for high volume versus high quality, um, using more process, more materials in a process like you're breaking down a bunch of planks. You can just break down planks from logs. It's one way to do it. Or if you get uh, a certain oil and like some water and a couple other things, you can uh, do it better and get either a higher quality product out of the process or get more yield of the standard quality unit. Um, so I could definitely see that being the sort of thing where um, it isn't just on the level of the crafter where you have the specificity and the skill differences. Uh, also as a level of preservation sort of thing, if you're only taking half of each boulder and you're only taking the, the branches off the trees instead of felling the trees, I could see that being part of the, um, uh, uh, naturalist and preservation sort of thing. So you don't tap out the resources and blight the area for a few seasons what that has me thinking of is steven has said that um raids or groups might want to take um gatherers with them or procurers basically so that um that master gatherer will be able to get uh extra resources than you would be able to get if you didn't bring them along. Um, so with that in mind, with what you were just mentioning, Nero, I'm wondering about um, that gatherer uh, in the raid. At the end of the raid, he goes up to the dungeon carcass, and yeah, maybe the, the ga that gatherer can decide whether or not um, what he's uh, grabbing from the dragon can be uh, used for a cleric or a rogue or a you know, maybe he's getting stuff that can be used for um, uh, shadow reagents versus holy reagents and, you know, lightning or um, you can, teleport, all of that stuff. That'd you, be fascinating. You can almost use even like a behavioral tree, right? So, you know, OK, we killed the dragon. I can harvest, you know, I can harvest the heart. But by doing so, I destroy the lung. So an alternative would be I could go in and choose to harvest one thing over the other, knowing that I couldn't get the opposite. That would be kind of fun, as long as they were both, you know, like equally useful um, in their own regards. Hmm. Or I could also see it being a um, kind of like a skill check on each one. And so getting out the teeth. Probably not so hard getting off the, the feet if you're trying to get, you know, rabbit's feet. Again, probably not so hard. Uh, but when you're trying to get more specific little bits and giblets and stuff, even if it's a larger creature, to be able to do it and make all the right cuts and use the right and have the right instruments. Um, I'm going to bring this fun fact up. Uh, the exotic animal uh, program at the college near me has... Uh, elephants and when you're trying to do surgery on an elephant you're going to go through about six scalpels before you've actually gotten through the hide enough to to work with anything like that's how thick and strong their flesh is so yeah extrapolate that to a magic dragon you're going to need some freaking diamond carbide like super heavy duty 
flashers to be able to get through that you might need a saw you might just need a, a little chainsaw sort of thing like it's it's not going to be pretty it's not like a nice little surgery like whoop, whoop, all right you know just a couple incisions no 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 it's going to be tough oh yeah that, that's where you're going to require a lot of skill yeah that's where you'd expect and that's where you'd see that progression as a crafter you know you get more skilled as you improve although you could even again change it different to where as you had mentioned earlier you you don't you could do the, be the crafter that does things in bulk so you could take a different arc to your training that focuses more on quantity rather than quality and put a bunch of stuff out there and see what sticks or you could take a route that allows you to be more nuanced and what you end up crafting later on maybe gives you access to more rare valuable items i think having those sorts of decisions you know meaningful decisions those so that you you know once you start down a path you it would take some time and effort to go back the other would be interesting as well since we can have that stinky fish cape um maybe we can have uh, a bloody dragon butcher armor <laughs> that we wear when we're going to go in and butcher the and have the hatchet on the back of the backpack. <laughs> um, I mean, that would be a great RP um, advertisement, you know? I, I'm the guy you want to butcher your dragons. Um, I, I would probably make a character for that. You know, that sounds like a good use of a Nuko character. I mean, well, they're all about like, the, the hunt, so, you know. That's going in from the inside. <laughs> if it's in the well, well, no, you're it, a dragon. I, I'm just saying, absolutely. Just, who, who needs to go through the scales or the or the tough hide? Just walk through the mouth and <laughs> chop your way out. Or what if in yeah. order to cut through the skin of the dragon, you needed dragon scales? Therefore, you had to first learn how to pry off the dragon scales and fashion them into something. So you are the crafter on the server that is able to do that and one of only five that can. Mm -hmm. That is that is what I miss kind of all the way back to, I guess, very maybe first expansion World of Warcraft. I feel like after that, everyone can basically... You know, you didn't really have to look very hard for people that can make you things. Um, EverQuest, you know, you knew who the top people were because it took time and effort. World of Warcraft was still the same way early on, especially before they added disenchanting to everyone. You know, when, when only the enchanter could um, disenchant, that was, the, it changed when they added that dynamic. So um, I would love to see things back to where your name is recognized um, as a crafter because of what you can do and only you can do on the server um, rather than because you're, you know, a part of some guild that did some server first, um, which is equally important, but, but crafting doesn't kind of get thrown up there as much anymore either. Yep. You don't have that in New World because there's too much randomness. Yeah. Give me a thousand. Give me enough mats for a thousand and I'll get you pretty close to what you want. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would say. Well, maybe that's changed with the new New World update. That didn't look like it. I read through the patch notes. <laughs> they're trying hard over there, but OK. I mean, they've been adding some things. I mean, they certainly look like they're, but I don't think they've reduced the randomness at all. It was actually more so with breaking things down, I think. I don't know. I, I've, I've, it's gone in one, gone in and left already. So <laughs> we've got about 10 more minutes. Is there anything that we can go into questions, but if there's anything that's been, you know, on your mind or even with the, the, the weather, um, you know, the things that have been posted from that. We talked about weather a little bit and season. So I'm still looking forward to that. Yeah, I mean, I still say with weather, regards to weather, the only thing is, does it get stale? Like, you know, are, are, is it di truly dynamic or not? And I didn't, I did ask that on Twitter and never got a response. So well, I'll, I'll make that my one question that doesn't get answered. Um, Nero was talking about Star Wars Galaxies um, 
and not being able to get certain things at certain times for due to seasonal changes, which I think is great. It it was it was even more so than that. Uh, A material would only begin to be found and then be available and then be mined out and never be mineable, never be gatherable again, ever, 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 ever. It was that materials were constantly rotating in and out and you had to try to get as much as you possibly could of the ones that had the absolute best attributes for each different individual thing uh, that you were trying to make. But when you're making it, you could pretty much make what you want out of the materials that you had. You could make things out of anything. Any iron ore would work for, uh, or uh, felsic ore would work with a felsic ore requirement. It could be the the crappiest iron that the server ever saw, or it could be the one that you just found like five minutes ago. You can make it. It doesn't mean it's going to be great, but until you're at a higher level, I don't know that that matters. And I did like one of the things they had with that system where part of it was making the items. Part of it was people actually had to go and use the items, I think, was the other part of what filled your skill points in. Hmm. So it's not just make 50 items. It's make 50 items that you or somebody else are actually going to use. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think the scarcity of item uh, resources, scarcity of resources, I, I, I'm fine with, right? I don't, and I think that's a curious thing with Ashes because we won't be able to do everything in the game. Um, and so I'm not necessarily going in thinking that I should be able to craft anything that I want. But I should be able to get pretty close to what I'm hoping for if I have the materials for it. And I'm a master crafter in that thing. I think that's my idea. Um, we had um, we had in the in the in the chat, um, Don was saying um, alchemy is on the side of alchemy as a mastery. So RNG won't affect him as badly, um, which I agree with. Although there should still be some pop- Possibility of explosion with with alchemy. Always, I think, because oops, sometimes it just didn't go exactly. Maybe, maybe a fly flew into the ointment. I don't know. I think the reason why alchemy is thought to potentially be limited is the idea that consumable items are always thought to be very specific, stackable sorts of things. Um that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the case. Um, there could be some range and some variance. And when you've got uh, a stack of healing potions, for example, you can either tell it what your priority is, which is, um, you know, highest or waste the least or whatever and it will automatically drink them out of that stack in that order but when you open that stack and investigate it you see all the different individual versions of it that you have uh so that is a way they could do it now that's a lot of data to track because if everybody's coming into a battle with 50 uh unique potions that's suddenly um what, 10 times more item data than would normally go into a raid group going into a battle? Um, so that could be a mess on the data side. And I can understand for that reason why it would be something they would kind of hold off on. Um, it could be another sort of thing that uh, a lot of alchemy isn't actually just doing single batches, but is instead doing larger batches. And the skill is uh something that contributes to using less resources for a batch and or getting more units out of the batch where somebody who's really got their skill up uses eight potions worth of material to get 12 of them instead of when you're early on and you're putting in 10 potions worth of material to get 10 of them so there's you know there's ways that the rng and the skill scaling and stuff can can definitely uh apply to alchemy beyond just 
going full max itemization of all potions and stuff too, which could be a little ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just like the idea of um, specific reagents having specific um, attributes associated with them so that you um, know if you're using a specific type of flower, it's going to add to um, either fire damage or fire resistance or some other one will do cold resistance or cold damage. Um, and I think that should go into all the crafting. Um, and I guess that's true with animal husbandry as well. Like I, I would want my, I, I guess sometimes, especially since we're going to be doing some magical combinations, we might get some weird stuff coming out that we might not have expected. Um, maybe chimeras and things like that, but um, there should be some logic. And we should have a little bit of science mixed in with our magic. Hopefully, <laughs> especially coming from Sanctus, that's going to be really wild. I guess coming from Sanctus when there where there was no magic and thinking we can do things methodically, and then all of a sudden find out, whoops. <laughs> Well, imagine how we can switch to lore real quick. Imagine how crazy that would feel. Because, again, in the lore we've had, so if you put yourself in your character's place, because the lore we've had so far is that the past has become not uh, fact and history, but legend and myth or just forgotten. So imagine all of a sudden this portal. Well, imagine if we're sitting here talking on, right now and a portal opened in each of our living rooms. Like just how, what the, it's going on, that would feel. Um, mm -hmm. I hope there is well, some like, story. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Well, because we're, we're saying, right, oh, well, how crazy it will be now they can use magic. Well, they don't even know magic exists from what we're told. <laughs> or believe it, like, I guess, would they even right? Would they even call it magic? Like, oh, this is some new science. We have to learn it. They wouldn't know other, otherwise than they'd calling it science. I mean, it doesn't even mm -hmm. have to be called magic. Yeah, you know I don't dive deep into a lot of these lores. I've never paid much attention to World of Warcraft. I paid a little bit more attention to uh, Final Fantasy. I have loosely with WoW, mm. um, EverQuest, EverQuest two a little bit more. But but mm -hmm. I don't know. I've, after we did that episode, I want to know more, and that's that's like the eight of ten questions that I can't ask because they won't answer them. So. <laughs> All he does, Stephen gave that those big, big eyes like, oh, and like, OK, is that all? Come on, answer one question. Um, one question. Oh, from <laughs> thousands of people. Yeah, well, that happens. Well, we are at nine o'clock, so I think that is our yeah. end time. We will Good save the, we will save the Q&A for uh, for next week. Not a ton of super interesting stuff. There's some, I think, good talking points, I guess. But um, okay. Well, all right, everyone. Thank you for joining us, and y'all have a good week. And we will see you uh, next Sunday. Yep. See you later, folks. <laughs>